This video, I'm going to be explaining my power counter constraint philosophy as it applies to Madden through the lens of my favorite offense in Madden, the New York Jets offensive playbook. If you guys have not gotten my full New York Jets offensive ebook, actually just updated it with some additional formations and money plays. You can get that full offensive ebook completely updated on my new website, school.com, or my new online community with school. The link to that's going to be in the description. It's school.com slash Cody Ballard. It's only $10 to be a member there. And the cool part is you're going to get access to all of our ebooks that we've released throughout the Madden season, as well as all of the ebooks we're going to be releasing into the college football season and next year as well. So if you're not a school member yet, you can sign up at the link in the description. Now, I talk a lot about this on my channel. I've talked about this for a really long time. This idea of power, counter, constraint. What is it? Why does it matter? Why does it work? How do I use it? And we're going to be teaching this philosophy through the lens of my favorite offense, which is the New York Jets playbook. A couple things real quick. Audibles that I would recommend you set for this scheme is really just dagger in the middle here. Um, it's the only audible. You don't really even have to have that. You could also make a good argument for flood. And then the RPO alert screen. The play you're going to be coming out in is going to be your power play. It's called corner strike. So what makes a good power play in Madden? Well, the, where I first came up with the idea of a power play was when I was watching some old film of Vince Lombardi, some documentaries about his Lombardi sweep. This is really the idea um, where, or, or where the kind of the, the foundation for this came from. And essentially, Lombardi had was famous for the Lombardi sweep. And it's probably the play that they hung their hat on the most when they won the Super Bowls. Obviously, the Lombardi Trophy named after Coach Vince Lombardi, the first two Super Bowls. So what they would basically do is they would run the Packers sweep or the power sweep to perfection. They would run it multiple times a game. They would run it against multiple different defensive looks. They had mastered this play. They had committed to this play. And Vince Lombardi is actually quoted as saying to his team when he's teaching them about the Packers sweep, this is the play that we must make go. This is the play that we will make go. This is the play that we will run again and again and again. So a power play, as I teach it in Madden, is something that you can hang your hat on. Something that you know is going to be a yard gainer. That's what they called the Packer sweep. It was a simple yard gainer. Um, one of the things that I thought was really interesting is in a, uh, some additional film study that I did in the um, late 2000s was on Peyton Manning. And back when the Colts offense was at its height with Tom Moore as the offensive coordinator, there was an article on smartfootball.com and JT O'Sullivan actually on QB school has a has like a 45 minute breakdown on Peyton Manning's favorite play which is one of my personal I've tried to teach this as much as I can but it's basically a levels concept now a levels concept in the way the Colts would run it I'll just show it here was essentially like a post route to the middle defender or the middle slot receiver and then a little like kind of like in route little china route over the middle with a seam read and then a backside curl flat so it looks something kind of like what you see here on your screen. I would have to have this guy down. Let me put this guy here. And this is kind of the idea. So when JT O'Sullivan was teaching this play, one of the things that I thought was really interesting that he would say about it is he kept calling. So the, the throw that was often made was this in route to Marvin Harrison. And, and O'Sullivan would basically call this. And, and of course, you know, Madden's not going to work with me here, but he would call that a handoff. He would just say over and over again, these are handoffs, 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 handoffs. And what he meant by that was these are high percentage throws that are really easy to complete against multiple different types of defenses that you're going to face. So again, here you'll see it would throw that kind of right there. And, and again, it'd be a little better because the route would come underneath a little better. But but that was the idea. It was this it's like five yard route that they committed to that they threw like 10, 15, 20 times a game. And this was what they hung their hat on. Now, what's important about a good power play is that it's a high percentage play that will have success against the majority of defenses that you face. Okay. For example, the corner strike double corner is good because it has a very high success rate against the most popular defenses that you are going to see. Why? Because it's very good against cover three, cover two, cover four we don't see a lot of man coverage this play is okay against man coverage it's not great against man coverage but it's okay and so let me explain 
So why is this play good against cover three, cover four, and cover two? It's good against cover three and cover four because that corner route on the right side, and notice we are on the left side hash mark, so we're running this play to the right. We're running this play with our bunch to the wide side of the field. The reason this is really good is because that deeper corner is going to pull the outside quarter zone and the outside third zone. So what can they cover that player with? Well, if they put that pressed corner on the right in a cloud flat, that is not going to get the depth required to defend this. So there's only one thing that they can really do to defend the short corner. The one thing they can do to defend the short corner here is to play cover two. So if they play cover two, that press cloud flat does have a chance to stop that short corner, but that cloud flat will not get enough depth to be able to defend the deeper corner that's going 40 yards down the field over the top, which is the whole purpose of putting that tight end streak there so that that tight end streak can manipulate the cover two. What is another super popular defense that you see in Madden 24? One of the most popular defenses that I've seen pretty much all year. And really, it's not just Madden 24. I've seen this defense be popular in Madden since Madden 20, Madden 21. And even before that, it was kind of popular. They just got to it a little differently. But it's this idea of a double flat. And what double flat just basically means is you have two flat zones that are designed one to take away the shorter flat route on the field, which would might be like a flat route to the tight end. The other one designed to take away the deeper corner route on that sideline. So it's known as double Mabel or double flat. So what we have here is a 30 yard cloud. Now that 30 yard cloud is going to take away the short corner for the most part, especially with KOs. What it's not going to take away is because we're running this with our bunch to the wide side of the field, this deeper corner route. And of course it's not going to co cooperate with me in practice mode here. But this deeper corner out will get over the top of that 30-yard cloud on the right-hand side of the field the majority of the time, okay? Uh, practice mode, a little bit different than in game, so just kind of keep that in mind here. But oftentimes, this deep corner is going to get over the top of the 30-yard cloud. You might just, you know, kind of freeform this up, and you see he's actually playing it way better than he normally would in game. So you're going to have to take my word for it. Um, but also one thing I did want to point out here, a lot of people don't set it to 30. A lot of people put it to 25. If they do set it to 30, one other really underrated little point is that this short corner will be open as you see. Okay. So the point is they can't put enough zone defenders on the right to defend this play. There's really only one zone defense that will defend this play. You might be saying, okay, well, what's that defense? That defense is, and it's a very specific one, it has to be this cover three cloud, okay? This is the only zone defense, really, that and you could get to it a couple different ways, but this is the main way to, to stop it. It's basically a pressed cover three cloud with that specific cloud flat dropping about 20 yards back to the sideline. So what you see here, is that cloud flat defends the short corner, that outside third defends the deep corner, and the middle third defends the tight end. So super good. Super good adjustment. Okay, Cody, you know, your best play is bagged. Another thing that is another little layer of this play, a little tweak that makes this really good, is they have to also kind of put a flat route to the circle or to the, to the slot receiver. Uh, the reason why they have to put a flat route over there to that slot corner is occasionally what I'll do when I feel like they're not blitzing is I'll put that running back on a table route and I'll high low that cloud over there on that left-hand side. So now you're having to devote even more resources. So the biggest point of the video here up to this point is to understand, well, number one, why is a power play a power play? What makes it good? Well, it beats the majority of coverages that they're going to call. Okay. Now, how do they have to defend this? This is one of the most important pieces that I could give you. You have to understand where your route combinations are weak and how they're going to be defended. There are two primary methods to defending the double corner concept. The first one is what I just showed you out of cover three cloud. And it typically is going to mean them also putting this guy in a purple zone. Uh, and so if you think about it, they're going to devote one, two, three, 
four defenders over to the four routes that are running to the right side. So we'll just kind of run the play. And you see, this pretty much bags it. And then again, again they'll, they'll use her the drag over the middle. Okay. So that is like the perfect defense they could play against this. And if we look at this closely, again, what you'll see here is you have one, two, three, four, five defenders over four routes. So obviously advantage defense, right? And then over here on the backside, they'll look at this. It's really important. This is a drop eight coverage too. So this is assuming they don't blitz you, which a lot of people blitz in Madden. You only have three people on the left side that you can do anything with. This is the most important part of understanding the power counter constraint relationship. To stop the power play, they are vulnerable to the counter play. So to make a good counter play, it has to be something that looks exactly the same. This is a very underrated point, exactly the same as your power play. So for example, if I go to bunch for my counter play, that does not look any that, that it doesn't look the same. It doesn't attack the same. In bun, and I run this. This is not a counter play. The reason this is not a counter play is because it looks different than the power play. It's a dead giveaway that I'm not running double corner. If you're playing a good bunch or a good defender, they're gonna understand. Oh, if you go to regular bunch, you don't have uh, a good double corner concept in the Jets playbook. Okay, so that's super important. It has to be from the same look. The second thing is it has to be from the same look, but attack the open space that has been created from the fact that you have committed to establishing your power play. The way the Packers did this was they ran a little fullback trap, a little trap play or counter play up the middle because their Packers sweep did a really good job of getting the running the ball carry out of the edge. So the defense had to be a little bit more uh, intentional about defending the edges of their, of their formation, which would then allow these little quick hitting trap plays up the middle of the defense. Same basic theory applies to this. If we look at Peyton Manning, they ran the levels concept, levels concept, levels concept, and then they would run the smash concept where that, route looked like it was going to cut to the middle of the field, but then it would cut to the corner once they started to kind of overcommit to defending the power play. So same, same type deal. So again, we go back to this coverage. And again, this is assuming oftentimes this is the user, right? Okay. So now we're going to go to our counter play. Our counter play is instead of attacking the right side of the field, the counter play is going to now attack the left side of the field. So how do we attack the left side of the field when all of our receivers are on the right? We're gonna cross the field. So we're gonna put a slot receiver on a post, tight end on a drag, running back on a, a streak. Okay, why these routes? Why are they good? What makes this play really, really effective? Well, one of the ways that people defend double corner is by not, uh, is, is this adjustment right here? Well, they'll put this guy in a flat, like a 30 yard flat, and then they'll put the sky to hook. So they won't defend like the hard flat of the field. What this does is it makes them have to defend that because we can now snap throw this, which is attacking that short, right, quick flat. So they have to have that flat defender. So that's why I was saying, you know, typically this is going to get a, this is going to be the, the adjustment, or sometimes they will do this as well. Both of those adjustments defend kind of what we're trying to. What, what, what they're trying to stop, okay? So now, where's the open space? Well, the open space is going to be dependent upon how they use her. But in general, we're going, to put the, we're going to put the user in conflict on the right. So he's going to pull that flat out, and then you see how we can kind of throw that running back in that little seam, right side seam area of the field, which we really didn't attack before. So now what they have to do is this has to be more of a hook curl, or even a vert hook like so. So if these are going to be more, again, just imagine with me a little bit, but you know, post snap, you're going to get more of this vibe here. This is going to kind of be how the coverage kind of moves. So now again, this is where we get what we wanted, which is a three over two to the left-hand side. So the three over two on the left-hand side here um, is going to matter because we're going to high low that curl flat defender on the left. So Essentially, if they go to user the running back, then you have this little high low where the drag is either going to be open or the post is going to be open on the deep left hand side of the field. 
So it's important to ask the question at this point in the video, how do they defend the left side of the field? How do they defend Durham? Durham is also one of the most difficult plays to defend in the game out of, against man coverage. So we talked about how double corner is not, not super great against man. Durham is. Durham has three routes that are going to absolutely torch man coverage. And if they, they don't know if safety help has even more than that. But as you can see here, this post is going to torch man. So super relevant for uh, the discussion on man coverage. But the other thing that's going to happen in terms of the power counter relationship here, guys, is their user, let's say their user goes in and guards the, the post. And let's say this guy goes and guards. Let's just say he's manned up on circle, right? So where's the open space now? Well, the open space is going to be the running back streak. So you see here, look at all that space in the middle of the field to be able to throw that. And then you can juke. What a lot of people will do if they're really trying to defend Durham, one of the best defenses in my opinion, is they will actually use her on this guy right here. Uh, and so now you're going to get you know super drop back coverage, but it's basically going to look something like what you see on your screen, and then they are going to go and take that post. So again, they're going to have to get up in the middle, and they're going to have to take the post. So where's the open space? What's the open route? It's really going to be over the top of this yellow, which is going to be right in that little void right there. So the point of this, what's the best defense for Durham? Really, the best defense for Durham that I've seen, and I've, I've, I've ran Durham a lot this year, is kind of a double Mabel to the left. It's kind of this on the left-hand side. So what does that mean they have to do on the right to defend double corner? They kind of can't. They kind of can't. The best way they could defend double corner would be uh, basically this right here, and this is a lot of adjustments. This is kind of the, the defense we're walking them into. And then the user, what's the user got to do? Well, the user has to take the running back. So what becomes open in this defense, which, again, this is probably the best coverage that I can think of for Durham off the top of my head. Well, what's, the, what's open now? Well, they got to go there, which means that post is going to be open before he gets to the cloud. So the point is there's a lot they have to do to defend Durham. There's a lot they have to do to defend double corner. And eventually they kind of both take care of themselves. So what we kind of walked them into with this, with this kind of strategy of power counter constraint, with pe we haven't really talked about the constraint aspect. So the power and counter is kind of the main thing that I told you. It's, it's really the yard gaining elements of the offense. And what we're going to get them to do is we're going to get them to overcommit. Any good Madden player, what they're going to start to do is they're going to start to get really aggressive and they're going to start to blitz you. That's, that's what they do. So what's going to happen is they're going to start to blitz you. There's probably going to be these adjustments right here, and they're probably just going to go user the double corner or they're going to go user the running back. This is what everybody wants to do, okay? So what would be a good play against this defense right here? What would be a good play against this blitz? Very simple, just an RPO alert screen. So they give us this look. We now can throw this, and we get out there, and we have a lot of blockers, and we have the ability to go to an RPO. The reason an RPO is good in Madden, especially this year, if you think about it, what does an RPO do really well? An RPO beats the blitz really well. An RPO uh, will beat – it beats everything really well, but it really beats the blitz well, as you see. And then it's also what I call constraint theory play. It, it, it makes it so that they cannot over-adjust to stopping what you're trying to do, right? So how are they over – if you think about it real quick, how are they over-adjusting with this defense? What's the over-adjustment? The over-adjustment is they're not going to have a flat defender on the left side. Um, this could also mean they might man up circle uh, with this player right here, or the user is going to get really aggressive. Those are some of the ways in which they do that. Now, this doesn't mean we can't still pass. Remember, our first setup out of double corner, what was it? It's a block of the running back. So if we can pick this blitz up, which we normally can here, you're going to see now that corner strike or double corner is going to be open to that right-hand side of the screen. So bottom line, boys, uh, is this is the general way things work, right? They're, this is the general flow of thought in schematics. It's power, establishing something, and understanding. There's only a couple of things they can do to take it away. Counter, which is something that looks exactly like your power play but goes in a different direction. And then constraint plays, plays like play action, 
plays like one play touchdowns would be a good example of a constraint theory play. If they're going to, cause, cause what was another, another thing I talked about or another thing I said, and I didn't get into this too much, but basically we talked about one of the best ways for them to play defense on us was to do something like, like this, basically, let me, uh, let me put this kind of hard flat. It's kind of purple. Something like this defense is one of the best ways they could do it with the user right here. If they run this defense, we go to Y trail, and then we just simply have all day because they're only going to be able to blitz three. And what will happen with this? Well, we know that this is a bomb against cover three. And a lot of times that post didn't get it right there, but a lot of times that post is a one-play touchdown over the top of the defense. So these are ways that the power counter relationship with the constraint theory plays are super important for your offense. I want to thank you guys for watching this video. And if you want to check out my website and get all my offensive and defensive eBooks, head over to the school page. I'll put a link to that in the description. It's where you'll get access to the full jets eBook. I completely redid it and uh, put in a bunch of new stuff for you guys over there. It's also going to have all of our college football eBooks, which we're going to be doing an entire year worth of content for college football. And it's going to have all of our Madden 25 eBooks for $10 a month. It is the best place to become a better Madden player and super cheap, super affordable. Try to make it so that everybody can have access to it um so if you want to check that out link is going to be down in the description